glad you're with us. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Welcome, everyone. Megan Mozak, and it's a real pleasure to be back in the studio with financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. Kirk and Michael, they are with the Retirement Education Foundation, and we're going to be telling you about the foundation's courses, and these are taught at major colleges and universities in your community. We're going to break that down, explain what you get from these courses. These are deep dives, almost master's level courses in retirement planning, so needed in today's environment. A modern retirement takes a lot of planning, a lot of know-how, and really a lot of education, and that's what Kirk and Michael set out to do each and every week here on the show and at these in-person courses. So stay tuned for details on that. And we do have a great program lined up for you today. We're going to get into that. want to remind you that this show can be listened to. It can be downloaded wherever you find your favorite podcasts. If you want to go back and listen, share it with a friend or listen to a previous program, you're welcome to do that. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour and get that wherever you find your favorite podcast. All right, Kirk and Michael, I want to dive in today. You know that famous saying, ignorance is bliss. We all know that one. But you say not when it comes to retirement planning. Explain what you mean by that. Well, okay. So what we are attempting to do with the, with our radio show is to provide those people within 10 years of retirement through retirement different sort of knowledge and information than they're generally hearing. So statistically speaking, we know that 50% of Americans aged 50 years old today. So if you're 50, 50% 50 of people by recent research that said, don't kill the messenger, doesn't have uh, the financial literacy to effectively plan for retirement. All right. So we know that now, and we also know the older we get, uh, for example, at 74 years old, only 40% of people have basic financial literacy abilities. So the problem is, as we are on this radio show and as we teach our classes in, in all the universities around the country, no one thinks it's them that doesn't have the financial literacy to be able to accomplish their goals. And the reason they all think that they do have the financial literacy, Michael, is because they had the greatest 10-year bull run in stock market history. Most of the people listening to our shows and going to our, our classes have saved a lot of resources and seen their wealth grow significantly over the t last 10 years. So therefore... If I have this much money, I have to be advanced in my knowledge around finances. And the truth is, even if they are advanced in their knowledge that helped them get to this point, none of the, our listeners, no one listening here today, CFOs, CPAs, engineers, attorneys, none of you have the knowledge to give you the retirement that is potentially available for you. And not very many people are going to give it to them. They're not going to be able to just consume this and read this through the noise that they're getting every day. Well, that's so two things you hit on. Number one, there is that that struggle people have of, well, wait a minute, I've done a great job saving. I have one, two, three, four, five million dollars. I'm really good at this. And number one, to your point, just because you've done a great job saving does not mean you have financial literacy. It means you understand the importance of saving and you've done a great job saving. And we were fortunate that your most important compounding time frame came during one of the longest bull runs in history. So that's fantastic. But that does not mean someone's financially literate, first and foremost. And for someone who is a bit more advanced and they've done a lot of research and reading and talking to friends or whoever, about the accumulation phase. The things you learned during the accumulation phase, building your wealth, are totally different than the things you'll need to know about when you're distributing the wealth, spending the money down in retirement. So Michael, why is this the first time anyone's, they're hearing this? These people, they get the same story as they were, have been getting the last 20, 30 years to accomplish what they've accomplished. They get the same story for retirement. And what we're going to tell you and what we're going to teach you in this radio show, and if you attend our class, is that you're going to way underspend what you otherwise should be spending because they have convinced you to be afraid in retirement, to spend less. The less you spend, the more the financial service industry makes. So this is why we're going to encourage you to attend one of our eight-hour courses that are taught at most of the major universities in your area. If you'd like to register for one of these master's level eight hour courses, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. 
So we have a lot of stuff to tackle today. We have a couple of main topics I want to get to, and it, it's all centered around the education that people think they have that they don't have. So we'll be talking about things that do and do not drive success in retirement. Everyone thinks it's returns. That's not the case. We'll be talking about what can happen if we don't have all the answers before we start making these important decisions and the tax drag that can happen if we're not focused on tax planning beforehand. We can't wait until we're already retired or already trying to figure out Roth conversions when it's too late. We got to have to plan all this stuff out ahead of time. Michael, at the end of the day, so you tackled a couple of things there, but at the end of the day, the goal today will be to help you to recognize some of the things that you don't know about, you've not heard about, different than you're hearing every day and why it's different than you're hearing every day, that's going to produce better outcomes for you in retirement. And when we say better outcomes, better outcomes will include being able to take and spend more income in retirement as a result, meaning you're likely going to be able to retire earlier because you can take a greater percentage than what you think you can take. You can be able to take six, seven, eight, nine percent withdrawal rates in your early to mid 60s without outliving your income. We're going to talk about it and teach it. It's going to mean that you're going to be able to pay a lot, a lot less taxes. And if you spe- if you pay a lot less in taxes, your money lasts longer. So therefore, you'll be able to spend more money or retire earlier so that your money lasts longer if you're saving hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes. We're going to teach you how to protect your surviving spouse. You have to plan today so that you put your surviving spouse whenever you do pass away, whether it's in five years, 10 years, 20 years, there are traps for that surviving spouse, that conventional wisdom, what you think should be driving your plan in retirement, those things are going to cause bad outcomes for that surviving spouse. So we're going to encourage you to stick around. At the end of the day, Our charity, the Retirement Education Foundation, which is a national charitable program, our goal is to get you to attend an eight hours master's level course that are held at the University of Michigan, the University of Missouri, Columbia College, Oakland University, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both Novi and Troy campuses. And to attend this eight-hour course, you can do it over two evenings, four hours each evening, or one full eight-hour day on a Saturday. You can also stream this while we're teaching it live from the courses. So all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to attend. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back. Plenty more with Kirk and Michael after this. Back with financial instructors, Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin, both with the Retirement Education Foundation. This, of course, the Retirement Education Hour. And I want to focus on that word for a minute, education. And this is really what the foundation sets out to do. They are focused so heavily on helping you get to a place of confidence through education helping you understand what it takes to plan for a modern retirement. And this is not just a a, a quick session. They, They really do set aside several hours. This is for you to get up to speed on all the important issues that surround people who are trying to plan for successful retirement. We really do believe you deserve a great retirement. And without this background, without this know how, you could be putting your retirement future at risk, and we do not want that for you. So what we want to show you is a way to very quickly, easily get registered for these courses. As you can imagine, they do fill up quickly. So I want to send you to the website first, and that is retirementplanningedu.org. Again, it's retirementplanningedu. Dot O-R-G. And while you're there, you're going to see that there are several major colleges and universities that hold these courses. And if you're listening today in the state of Missouri, I'll let you know these courses are taught at the University of Missouri, also taught at Columbia College, many other major colleges and universities in Missouri. You can check those locations out. If you're listening today from the state of Michigan, you can attend at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University. Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campuses, Oakland University is another location. These courses are also streamed live. That means you can watch, you can 
Listen from the comfort of your own home. Participate that way. And speaking of Missouri, I want to point out that this foundation, the Retirement Education Foundation, are, they're proud partners with Mizzou Athletics. This is a great partnership. Um, there's a real commitment here to people who are living in this state to help you understand how to plan for a successful retirement. So get your seat registered, get it reserved, go to retirementplanningedu.org. If you'd rather call, you can do that too. The number is 800-240-8981. Now keep in mind, you can go back, listen to this show, many others in our library. You can download it wherever you find your favorite podcast. You just have to search for the name of the show, Retirement Education Hour. I want to get back to the topic today with Kirk and Michael. Ignorance is not bliss, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to planning for retirement. And there are some very big pitfalls when it comes to not understanding, having low financial literacy around some of these planning topics, Kirk and Michael, tell us more. So first and foremost, Megan, again, roughly 50% of people age 50 and older cannot pass a basic financial literacy test. And even the people who can, they can pass the test based on the knowledge they've accumulated, based on what they learned about growing their wealth, which very little of that is applicable when it comes to building a retirement plan. Now, what's a little even more concerning than that, to be honest, is there's also a bit of a gender gap here. And so, again, the data shows, statistically speaking, that on average, men can pass the test a bit at a, at a, at a higher frequency than women. And so what people often forget is uh, take a case with a husband and wife where the husband might be managing the, the finances for the household. At some point, he may pass. And again, men pass away earlier than women on average. And so he's leaving that, uh, that widowed spouse now on her own to pick up the pieces. And we hear from people all the time saying, oh, well, I sit my spouse down every Saturday. I call it spreadsheet Saturdays. And we go through all the spreadsheets and the numbers. <laughs> and the, the spouse looks at us with her eyes glazed over saying, I don't ever pay attention to spreadsheet Saturdays. I do Sudokus during that, but during that Saturday morning. <laughs> They're not paying it's attention. So They're not listening. And so this really has got to be a sort of a team sport here in terms of making sure both people are on the same page with what the retirement plan should call for. Now, to pull it back to what really matters, you know, the, one of the maybe biggest mistakes we see people make is thinking that the average rate of return drives success, period, full stop. That's what a lot of people believe because that's what drove success for them when they were growing the money. When you're growing the money, all people care about is number one, savings rate, and number two, what's my average return? That's all they really care about. Michael, it, look, Michael's. So he, he, he's, he's trying to say this in a very respectful way, but the statistics tell us this, that baby boomers usually have one person responsible for the finances. And for baby boomers, it's typically the men. And you men are leaving your spouses in a really, really vulnerable position. And you don't know when you are going to die. Statistically speaking, you're going to die before your wife. And I'm here to tell you, after teaching tens of thousands of people around this country about retirement planning, we are seeing people die in their 60s, their 70s, and their 80s. And the spouse, the number of financial abuse that is occurring, I'm not even, that's a whole different show. It's a massive problem. And a lot of it is because of the baby boomer men who are just insistent on thinking they know what they're doing doing this themselves and not forcing an engagement of both the husband and the wife. So we strongly encourage that both husbands and wives come to the classes in our own private practices. We require that it's a two player sport and folks, I don't care how much money you've saved your one, two, three, five, ten, twenty million $20 million. We're telling you, there's, there's no agenda here. We are a national charity teaching eight-hour programs, educational programs for people approaching and in retirement. And these are master's advanced level courses. We have nothing to gain here by lying to you. You guys are not prepared. And in my fear for most of you that have that one to $10 million, being unprepared doesn't mean you're going to outlive your money. I'm not here to create fear. That's the financial service industry's job to create fear. Our concern for you is you're going to underspend what you otherwise should and could be spending, meaning working longer, paying more taxes, and living on less. And every time something happens in the market, every time there's a short-term market event, which will happen four to seven times throughout a retirement, you're going to panic. 
you're going to change your lifestyle. And you're going to do it because all of the financial service industry is going to tell you when the market gets bad, spend less. That's crazy. Right, to, right now, if you're not retired in your lives and the market does poorly, do you change your lifestyle? No, because someone's sending you a paycheck. You have to have the knowledge and ability to build a plan so that up, down markets, whoever's being elected, it doesn't matter. You aren't going to change your lifestyle. And without the knowledge and education to build an individualized plan for yourself that you'll never get by the, from the financial service industry, there's no incentive for them to give you the ability to spend more money because the more you spend, the less the financial service industry makes. Please listen to our radio shows. Attend our eight-hour classes that we're teaching at most all the major universities now. We are a charity teaching these master's level courses. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return plenty more Retirement Education Hour coming up. We're glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak here alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. And we've been having a great discussion today on ignorance. Now, ignorance, we know, we've been told is bliss. Kirk and Michael, though, they're making a very strong case that when it comes for, to retirement planning, you really do need to know quite a bit. And what you don't know, well, it can actually hurt you. So it's the opposite of bliss. We're going to get back to that conversation here in just a moment. want to remind you that the Retirement Education Foundation hosts courses. These are deep dives, almost master's level courses on retirement planning. And they do this right in your community at major colleges and universities. In the state of Missouri, you can attend at the University of Missouri. In fact, the Retirement Education Foundation is a proud partner of Mizzou Athletics. And you can also attend at Columbia College. Go to the website to find more locations and times. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Use that same web address if you're in Michigan. You can attend at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. These are either one or two day courses, your choice, and everyone has the option to view these from the comfort of their own home. They are streamed live for your convenience. So go to the website, get registered now, reserve your seat at retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Want to get back to the topic at hand today and keep in mind this show and so many others in our library, you can download wherever you find your favorite podcast. So be sure to do that. Just search for Retirement Education Hour. All right, Kirk and Michael, you know, there are some people out there when it comes to financial literacy, and they say, well, I know quite a bit. Actually, my financial literacy is pretty strong. But you say that could actually land them in a pitfall. There's risk associated with that mindset. Why? Well, there's many. And so we're going to dedicate the next couple of segments specifically to discuss some of these things that people are not aware of, right? So what it took for you to accumulate your wealth is not the strategies that's going to maximize your retirement. And so while the financial service industry is incentivized to create fear, to not properly prepare you or educate you, not actually do individualized, customized plans, they're incentivized to not do these things because the less you spend, the more they make. So while you believe the rate of return on your investments is what will drive your performance in retirement, that is not what drives performance in retirement. Now, I know that's really confusing when I say that people are like, what are you talking about? So again, we are a charity. We're a national charity that have taught tens of thousands of people approaching retirement and in retirement how to maximize their retirement, okay? We're a charity. Hear us when we say we're a charity. So we have no incentive to create fear, doubt. There's no incentive to teach you something other than what is best for you. And so our greatest fear, unlike most people that are in retirement, our greatest fear for you is not that you're gonna outlive your money. That is not our greatest fear for you. Our greatest fear for you is that you're going to way underspend what you otherwise could be spending because you're focused on rates of return instead of rates of income. 
You cannot market time and stock pick your way to more income in retirement. It won't happen. No matter what you choose, no matter how what strategy you use, everyone in this financial service industry is going to tell you the same thing. You should only take out 3 or 4%. You can take out 6, 7, 8, 9% if someone teaches you how to do income planning. And that is what you time. You don't stock pick and market time your investments. You market time your income. So where you take your income from during different market conditions will drive your success in retirement. We show it all the time in classes, in our eight-hour classes, where people have an average rate of return of 3% over their retirement, but they can have an 8% withdrawal rate, meaning if you retire with $2 million, you can have $160,000 a year and never outlive your income, and all you got was a 3% average rate of return. You're focusing on the wrong things. What you have to focus on is you're going to have some aggressive investments. You're going to have some insured investments. You're going to have some investments that are really, really, really conservative. And you are going to take your income from the appropriate one buckets of money during the different market volatility. If the market's up, you're going to take it from one account. If it's down, you're taking it from another account. If it's neutral, you're going to take it from another account. It's market timing your income that's going to drive success. And that's because of the number one risk to retirees. It's sequence of returns risk. That's what will drive your performance in retirement. Managing sequence of returns risk. That was, I know I, I struggled there, Michael. Clean it up for me. So sequence of returns risk, it's a new concept for a lot of people, which is a little sad and a little scary because to your point, that is for everyone, the number one risk to their retirement. Essentially, the average rate of return once you're pulling the money out is irrelevant. What matters is when are the good years and when are the bad years. When people are growing their wealth in the accumulation phase, the average return does matter. If you have 6% versus 7 versus 8, when you're growing the money over 10, 20, 30 years, the average return does matter. But once you're pulling the money out, that average number does not matter anymore. What matters is when are the good years, when are the bad years, and when we have bad years, do you have pivot accounts, safety nets set up? I know when you said earlier, having buckets of aggressive money, safe money, conservative accounts, people, the, the return chasers hear conservative and they think, oh, that's boring. If, if it's safe, that means I'm not going to get a, a growth rate on that account. You don't need growth rates on every single account. You need some accounts that are safer, that are not tied to the stock market, so that when things do crash, we have a safe bucket of money to turn to. No, Michael, that's not what the financial service industry tells them. They say, no, 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 you just have all of this money. And, and you just pull your money out. And when market t when markets are bad, when we have market events, short-term market events, just reduce your spending. Just protect your principal. So just uh, I'm sure that's consistent with how people have lived their life. Every time we had a, a market event, everyone spent less money, right? Isn't that what you did when you were working? No, it's not what you did because someone else was paying you a paycheck no matter what, whether the market was up or down. Now you have to start paying yourself a paycheck. You become self-employed when you're retired. And you should not change your lifestyle because of a short-term market event or because someone you don't like is being elected. It's irrelevant. You have to build your plan to sustain the four to seven major market events throughout retirement and then manage your income around that. This might sound foreign. I get it. Stick around. We're going to talk more about it next segment. But this is why the classes are eight hours to teach you how to build your own individualized, customized plan based upon your own retirement pieces that you have. Everyone's retirement is different. You have different resources. You need to attend one of these eight-hour courses to know how to build your own retirement plan. Attend or to, to register for one of our classes, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back in a moment. There's more with Kirk and Michael straight ahead. We're glad to have you with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak alongside Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. Great show today as we're talking about is ignorance bliss when it comes to retirement planning? And of course, Kirk and Michael, they're making a pretty good case that it is not. And what you don't know 
It could end up hurting you in retirement. You can learn more about retirement planning when you attend the Foundation's upcoming courses. These are deep dives, almost master's level courses on retirement planning. No matter where you're listening today, if you're in the great state of Michigan, we have options for you at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both campuses, Novi and Troy, or Oakland University, your choice, either a two-day or one-day course. And if you're listening from the state of Missouri, welcome. We're glad you're here as well. You can attend at the University of Missouri. And the foundation, it's a proud partner with Mizzou Athletics. Also in the state of Missouri, Columbia College is a location. You can go to the website to find out more locations, dates, and times that work best for you. Get registered now. Retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or pick up the phone to register at 800 240 89 81. And don't forget, you can re listen to this show, share it with a friend, listen to many more in our library. Wherever you download your favorite podcast, simply search for the name of the show, Retirement Education Hour. All right, Kirk and Michael, as we've been talking about financial literacy, even for those people who feel like their financial literacy is advanced, many of them don't understand the idiosyncrasies around sequence of return risk. Can you explain that again? Yes, I'm glad you asked again, because sequence of returns risk is what will drive your performance. All of you who are so focused on your returns, you want to know what's going to drive your success and returns in retirement? It's driven by sequence of returns. That's what's going to drive it. And so if you manage it properly, you can take out withdrawal rates of six, seven, eight, maybe even 9% per year to live on. If you manage it poorly, you're going to have to take out 3% today. That's what the statistics tell us. You'd have to take out 3%. So the default is people do a little bit of managing a little bit and then just take their 3 to 4%. And then they're told to protect their principal at all costs. And when the market gets does poorly, then you reduce your spending. I don't know what people did from 2000 to 2010 because we lost an entire decade where the market did nothing. So people spent no money. Is that what they did? So it's driven by... Sequence of return. So in the class, and, and it's really hard to explain, but in the class, Michael, we give a, we spend a lot of time on this and we give a number of examples. And I think the most, the most shocking reaction we get early in the class is when we show someone how they can have an over 10% average rate of return over a 20 year period. So that means you've invested money for 20 years and you've earned over on average over 10% rate of return. But during that period of time, you took out 5% every year for income to live on. And in one example, that they had a good sequence of returns event, they had $2.7 million left 20 years later. In the poor sequence of return example, they've ran out of money in 17 years, Michael. Michael, that's 17 years. They had over a 10% rate of return and only took out 5% a year and ran out of money in 17 years. People listening can't get their arms around that. That's why they got to go to the class. And that's why managing your income, market timing, your income, not your investments is going to drive success. Well, and this is also why we see people come from the accumulation phase a little overconfident, overconfidence bias. We talked about that uh, on the show as well before, because like I said before, in the past, average returns did matter. And now they matter less because the sequence matters more. And just to walk through the math a little bit, which we, we have the calculators online that can, that can show people this. If you lose 25% in a single year, if someone has a million dollars, they lose 25%, people off the top of their head think, well, I need 25% the next year to, to get back to break even. That's not the case. No. You need almost 34% to get back to break even. Michael, that's wrong though, because if they're retired, and they're taking out 5% a year, how much do they need, Michael? So if they retire, you're down 25%, you take out 5% more. So now you're down to 70% of your original principal. Now you need almost 43% the next year to break even. So, so, so you're telling me in 2008, and I'm cherry picking a three standard deviation event, Michael, I get it. But in a 2008, if you had a 60-40 portfolio, a moderate portfolio, 60% stocks, 40% bonds, your portfolio would have lost 28 to 33 percent. That's right? what that's what a moderate portfolio lost. Correct. Correct. Uh, how about in 2022? How much did a moderate portfolio lose last year? Somewhere in, in the range of call it 25 percent. 
uh, yeah, twenty ish, twenty five percent, depending on what if there was a tilt. But so 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 they're dead. Their retirement is dead. This is why they have to. This is why every advisor you go to, or every article you read, or anyone that's trying to do this themselves, or any calculator online, from your four hundred one k's to Schwab to Fidelity to Vanguard to Morningstar, every retirement calculator will give you almost the same answer. It's going to be whatever you have saved, and if you're 65 years old, you can take out somewhere between 3 and 4%. Because we are going to have years where the market loses 15, 20, 25, 30% in a moderate portfolio. That is not uncommon for that to happen. And you have zero chance of recovery if you are taking more than that 3 or 4%. It's just math. And people going into retirement cannot connect the dots. They're so focused on, guys, no one has a secret sauce to investing. No one, no one does. There's not one mutual fund manager that out there that has been able to stay in the top 25 percentile, the top quartile for five consecutive years in history. 40% of mutual funds go out of business after 10 years, 40%. They just, they, the, the, the mutual fund ends after 10 years. It's done. After 10 years, the average actively managed mutual fund is performing at less than 4% over the last 30 years, while the index, the S&P 500 is performing at over 10%. Investing isn't hard. It's one of the easiest things there is. You just buy the index. Tell your kids, just buy an index fund and leave it alone. Your problem in retirement is you just can't leave it alone. Or that's what we would tell you to do, just buy the index. But you can't because you have to withdraw money. And so unless you're willing to change your spending patterns every time there's a short-term market event, unless you're willing to spend half the amount of income that you otherwise could be spending, if use conventional wisdom. Don't come to our class. But if you want to learn how to manage your income so that you can take 6 7 8% withdrawal rates, save hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes, come to the charities eight-hour classes that are taught at most of the major universities in your area. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. The Retirement Education Hour continues right after this. Glad you're with us on the program today. This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm here with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. And we've been telling you about the Retirement Education Foundation's courses. And this is a chance to meet financial instructors like Kirk and Michael, really pick their brains and hear from them in this deep download of information, either over two days or a one-day course. It is your choice. You can find out more at the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That is the website to visit if you'd like to know more about locations, dates, and times. And you can get registered. These, these courses do fill up quickly, as you can imagine. We want you to register and reserve your seat today. And they're held in your community at major colleges and universities. In the state of Missouri, you can attend at the University of Missouri. And the Retirement Education Foundation is a proud partner of Mizzou Athletics. You can also attend at Columbia College. If you're listening today from Michigan, you can attend at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. And if you want to view from the comfort of your own home, well, these courses are streamed live. So that's always an option as well. Find out more at the website. Get registered now. Go to retirementplanningedu.org or give them a call, 800 240 8981. That's 800-240-8981. Is ignorance bliss when it comes to retirement planning? Kirk and Michael say no. We're going to get back to our topic now. And keep in mind, this show today, you can re-listen, share with a friend. You can download it and many others in our library, wherever you find your podcast. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. All right, Kirk and Michael, I'm going to challenge you here. You mentioned sequence of return risk. I get it. It is a risk. It's pretty significant. That is a big problem. But what's the solution? Well, the solution, and we're going to, you know, do this really quickly. And there is no solution to a problem as complex and difficult as sequence of returns risk or retirement. 
that is simple. <laughs> that is one of the problems. There's no simple solution to this, despite the whole industry telling you it's not that complicated. It's simple. Well, it isn't. So the solution is having different pivot accounts. We call them pivot accounts. You can just call them different buckets. You can call them whatever you want, but having different accounts that are not correlated to one another. So what, is, what do I mean? So I, you have to have some accounts with money in it that when we have a major market event that you can pivot to to pull your income from. So you don't have to change your lifestyle. You don't have to change your income. You don't have to change your amount. You don't have to protect your principal. You just pivot to take income from account that isn't being impacted and you wait for those more market-based, risk-based investments to recover before you pivot back to those accounts to pull money from. So it sounds simple, Michael. I know in theory it's, it, it is comp more, much more complicated because then you get into different tax registrations, whether it's a pre-tax, post-tax, are a tax friendly. There's, there's so many different, and then there's pensions versus lump sums. There's all these different is we like to call them puzzle pieces and everyone has different puzzle pieces. So everyone's puzzle is going to look different and have to go together differently. There is not a cookie cutter one size fits all for this. There's not. And if there was, the industry would be coaching you on it already. The fact that there's not a one size puzzle, a one size cookie cutter solution leads to the fact that the industry goes, ah, this is really tricky to cover. And instead of really digging in and answering the question for every individual person, we're just going to kind of skip it and convince them to spend less or work longer or a combination of the two. What's their incentive, Michael? The less you spend, the more they make. Why are they going to teach you to spend more? So instead, what they do is they push the rules of thumb. Yes. They push the, the – the, was the 4% rule now, depending on, on where you look, it's 28 3 3.3%, 3.6% rule – and then still cut your income back when markets are getting volatile. They'll push the 60-40 portfolio. That's the, quote, unquote, the golden balanced portfolio. Now they're pushing 75-25 to make their 4% rule work. But to set take, that yeah, aside. Just take more risk. The, the rule of 100, all these different rules of thumb. Yes. If this was that easy, that a, a true general rule of thumb could cover it, we wouldn't need individualized plans. Michael, you know one of the rules, I know I, I, I keep in around you and I, I'm dominating the, the airways, I'm sorry, but one of the rules that really impacts, especially our listeners and the people coming to our class, is the when to take money from which type of registration, which account, right? It's the se sequence of taking income. What order should I take my money in? Should I take my money from my IRAs first, my non-IRAs first? Do I, when, what's the order, right? And so there is conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom is not designed for the person with one to $10 million. All these general rules Michael just referenced, including the, the order of which you should take income, is all based upon the average baby boomer. And the average baby boomer, while you think you may think you're average, many of you aren't. The average baby boomer is going to retire with less than $250,000 saved for retirement. So those rules, those general rules that are fine for that person with less than $250,000, even that person less than $500,000, the rules usually can work and apply because you need to protect your principal. You really shouldn't take more than 4%. You don't have a lot of after-tax money. Most of your money is going to be in retirement accounts. So these rules will work for that. But anyone that's got 700, a million, 3 million, 5 million, 10 million, these rules do, there's no general rule. Every one of you rule will be different based upon the type of assets you have, your ages, the age gap between you and your spouse, whether you're married or single, whether you have a pension, how big of both of your social securities. There's so many variables and that's why the class is eight hours, Michael. And really, it's, there are so many things we have to, have to tackle in terms of the tax planning, the Social Security planning, because the rules, I mean, don't get us started on the rules of thumb for things like Roth conversions. How many times have we, have we had tax-obsessed people come to the class saying, I'm going to Roth convert every single penny that I have because I don't want to pay taxes in the future? And we have to walk them through, okay, you can do that. You'll be doing the government a massive favor if you do because you don't really understand the tax code, but you read online somewhere, Roth conversions are important, Roth convert everything. Guys, when people listen, they think someone's giving them the answers or there's no one answer. So I know some people are listening right now and just say, ah, I, I, that, what are you saying? I don't Roth convert. No, you, many of you should be Roth converting. But the Roth conversion calculation is based upon knowing what your future taxes are going to be over the next 30 years or 20 years. 
projecting it out, and then finding the most efficient path to then take income to minimize your taxes over 20 years. Not next year or two years or five years. It's 20 years. We don't just fill brackets. We don't just Roth convert all the way to the top of the 22 bracket or the top of the 20. This is ridiculous. It's got to be more nuanced than specific, and that's why it's an eight hours master's level courses. That's why we've partnered with universities. That's why we're a charity to teach the real strategies to get you the best outcomes. Attend one of our eight-hour classes. All you have to do is go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we will be back with Kirk and Michael right after this. We're glad you're listening to the Retirement Education Hour today. Megan Mozak alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They're both with the Retirement Education Foundation. The Retirement Education Foundation, proud partners of Mizzou Athletics. Also, that university is a great location for you to attend the foundation's courses on retirement planning. These are almost like master's level courses. And the University of Missouri, that is a great location if you're listening today from Missouri for you to attend. You can get a front row seat. We want you registered today. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Also, in the state of Missouri, you can attend at Columbia College. If you're in Michigan today listening, hello to you. We want you to know you can attend these courses at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. Again, it's either a one-day or a two-day course up to you. And if you'd rather attend from the comfort of your own home, these courses are all streamed live. So that's another option. Go to the website Find a location, a date, a time that works for you at retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. We're going to dive back into the topic of the day. Reminder, if you'd like to listen to this show again, you're welcome to do that. Simply download it wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Just search the name of the show, Retirement Education Hour. All right, Kirk and Michael, back to this topic. And, you know, as we've talked about what you don't know might end up being a risk to you in retirement. There are a number of our listeners who are savvy and they are financially literate, maybe even advanced financial literacy. But really, there is no sure path, right? There is only helping you gain the greatest advantage to have the best outcome possible. And to that end, I know there's a path that you encourage everyone to take. What is that? Well, I think anyone that's been listening to our show for a while know that we dedicate the last segment always to the solution to all of these problems, the solution to helping you produce the best outcomes. And now I want to be clear, and we are really, really proud of our partnerships with the different universities, and we are proud that they allow us to teach the eight-hour courses there. It's important people understand, anyone that's going to attend this course, it's really advanced. It's like a master's level course. It is a lot of information over an eight-hour period, and while we do offer it so that you can stream live, it is not an on-demand streaming. It is live. There's no pausing it, going in reverse. It is on-demand. So what the secret to everything in retirement is having the knowledge and information to be able to produce the best outcomes. Our engineers can uh, appreciate this. Understanding how to run all the iterations, modeling all the different possible paths that you can take through retirement. And when I say paths, do you guys think it's all investing? It's not investing. It's where do I take income from, during what market conditions, at what age, at what tax bracket, based upon am I married or not? There are so many variables that when we build in our private practice, Michael, you know this, when we build a plan for a client in our private practice, we spend 50 to 100 hours on every single plan, manually running hundreds of iterations to minimize taxes. And so that's what we're going to teach you in the classes. How can I save taxes? And we're not talking a few dollars. In many cases, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes just by changing when you take money out of which accounts. Literally just doing that. And then how do I manage sequence of returns risk so I can produce 6, 7, 8, 9% withdrawal rates, double industry standards, industry averages, the general rules, double, pay a lot less taxes, a lot more income. Michael, I'm running on, but there's there's just so much. 
Well, I always laugh. There's a section of the class in particular where we walk through uh, standard deductions and tax codes and how to get money out of pre-tax IRAs and pay very little to no income taxes. A lot of times, no taxes at all, right? And that's that's the part of the class where people go, wait, 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 wait. Uh, they just walked me through the tax code, walked me through withdrawal uh, situations, and they're getting this money out at what I thought would be in the tw- in the high 12, low 22% bracket, tax-free. And that's when it kind of clicks and they go, okay, it's not some simple formula for finding the next, the next hot stock. It's not about identifying the next crash. No one can do that. This is mapping this all out for the next 5, 10, 20, 30 years and making sure I have a game plan for I'm going to pull how much income from which accounts and which tax brackets, when to Roth convert, pension, social security, spousal considerations, all these different pieces. It's not magic. There's no formula that's going to be dropped in your lap. It's planning. Michael, 95% of people, this is all people, this including advisors, 95% of people taking Social Security do it wrong. They leave many times hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table because it's a tax problem. It's a tax problem. It's not a stupid calculator online that you can use. It's not eMoney or Money Guy Pro that's going to produce your retirement plans. Not for someone that's got a million to $10 million. An intern, literally, I can put you at a desk right here, any of you listeners right here, stick you on eMoney or Money Guy Pro, the software that all the major firms are using right now. They sometimes private label it, but it's all the same tool to give you a probability of success, a dial, different chart showing you the likelihood of outliving your money. None of them is mapping it out for you, and that's what the charity does. That's what we've dedicated the last decade to and taught tens of thousands of people how to at least understand how to find the right people to help them build the most efficient possible retirement plan so they can retire earlier, pay less taxes, and have a lot more income in retirement. Probably the biggest thing, much more freedom, less fear and anxiety. Inflation isn't the boogeyman, retirees. They've got you convinced. They got you scared. There's so many things they scare you to try to get you to spend less of your money so that they can make more on your money. So attend one of these eight-hour courses. They're almost master's level courses taught at the University of Michigan, the University of Missouri. We're partnered with the University of Missouri, Oakland University, Columbia College, Michigan State University, uh, Eastern Michigan University, a lot of universities. You can, And there's a lot more coming too, by the way. And all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register or check out more about the charity's website, go to charity's website. That's retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Retirement Education Foundation is a fiscally sponsored program of United Charitable, a registered 501c3 public charity. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is paid for by the Retirement Education Foundation.